Alright guys, how's it going? So I have what I would consider a first world problem. <laughs> my headphone wire keeps getting caught underneath my computer chair. And I thought, okay, I need to solve this once and for all. Now I could just use a cable tie, tie it to the table and be done with it. But I'm fortunate enough to own a 3D printer. So I thought, okay, I might as well make a video out of this. So I'll quickly model what you see here on the desktop. And then I'll show you some of the print workflows. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to delete this object. I don't need it. I'll press Shift and A and I'll add in a plane. Now when it comes to 3D printing, you're always best working in real world scale. But I have a kind of cheat and I'll show you that towards the end. But I'm happy just to kind of model here at the moment. So I'll tab in the edit mode and I'll enable X on the mirror options. And what I'll do here is I'll press 2 to select an edge and I'll select this edge here. And I'll just move it in. And this will act as our base. I'll then press 3 to select faces. I'll press A to select all the mesh. And I'll do a quick extrusion. Now I don't want to waste too much filament. So that should be fine. The next thing I'll do is I'll press 2 to select edges. And I'll just select all the outer edges by holding in shift. And the reason I want to do this is I want to bevel them. So I'll then come to the bevel tool on the left hand side. And I'll do a slight bevel. So something like this. I'll open up the dialog box and I'll put the number of segments to 12 so it's nice and rounded. Perfect. I'll press 3 to select the face and I'll select the top face. And I'm going to insert this in a little bit. That should be fine. I'll then press Alt and I'll do a loop select around the outside edge. And I'll extrude this up. And this will act like a kind of lip. Perfect. We now have a base. So I'll press Tab to go into object mode and I'm going to import a scalable vector graphics. Which is this icon that you've seen. So I'll go to File, Import, Scalable Vector Graphics. It's sitting on the desktop, I believe. And it's just one I've grabbed off the internet. Now it's kind of hidden underneath the mesh, so I'm going to actually hide the plane. While I'm here, I'm going to rename this to Base, just to keep things nice and tidy. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the camera and the light. I'll then select all the curves, which I've just imported. Now I could use the geometry options to extrude it, but what I'll do here is I'll go to Object, I'll go to Convert and I'll Mesh from Curve and this will make it a mesh. I'll then press Spacebar and I'll join these objects and I'll merge them all into one object. Now the shortcut for this is Control and J. And there we go, we've got something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale this up. So I'll press S to scale on the keyboard. And I'll kind of move this in the middle. I'll press 7 on the numpad just to get a better view. I'll press Z and I'll go into Wireframe. And that means I can kind of get an accurate representation. That looks fine to me. I'll tab into object mode, I'll go back into solid by pressing Z, I'll press A to select all the mesh and I'm going to extrude this down. Now I actually want to extrude into the base so when it prints it acts as one object. So I'll move this up, I'll press 1 in the side view, I'll then go into wireframe mode and I'll just make sure this is perfect. Now I'm going to move this up a little bit, I'm going to select the mesh and I'll move it back down just to make sure it's intersecting here. And that looks fine to me. I'll press Z, I'll go back into solid view, and the next thing I need to do is a kind of hook. So I'm inside of object mode, I'm going to add in a mesh, and I'll just do a simple cylinder. Now I could put the vertices up, I'll maybe make it something like 46, why not? I'll tab into edit mode, I'll select the top face, and what I'll do here is, I'll actually separate this mesh. So I'll go to mesh, separate, Separate by selection. You can see here it's made a new mesh, so I don't necessarily need the original cylinder anymore. So I'll right click on it, delete, and I'm left with something like this. I might as well rename it while I'm here, and I'll call this hook. I'll tab into edit mode, I'll select the face, and I'll do a quick inset. That should be fine. I'll then delete this face. I'll press A to select all of the mesh and I'll do a quick extrusion and I'll extrude this down. I'll quickly jump back into object mode and I'll rotate this 90 degrees. Now I could hold shift to do snapping or control to do larger ones. And that means I'm perfectly on 90 degrees. If not, you can use the dialog box here. I'll press S to scale the object and I'll just scale it inside of the actual mesh. Now let's move it down a little bit. And let's move it up a bit. Now I could move this right up so it's actually inside of the mesh. And you can see here it kind of clips a little bit. Now I could go into edit mode and I could actually just take away these polygons. But we have modifiers in Blender for a reason. So I'm going to make sure I've selected the ring. I'll come to the modifier tab on the right hand side. And I'll do a boolean. 
and I'll just use the dropper tool and I'll select this here. Perfect. Now it's made a nice boolean cut. I'll tab into edit mode and what I can do here is I'll go into wireframe and Z and I'm going to select these polygons and I'll just quickly delete them. I'll press A and I want to move this down just ever so slightly just to make sure there's no gap and there we go we pretty much have the hook. I'll press Z to go back into solid view and that's perfect. That'll actually work for my headset. My wire will drop in there. Now some users might need to be able to fit the wire in so what you can do is you can do like a loop select around these polygons we can delete these faces I can then press 2 to select edges and I'll loop select by pressing ALT this edge and then I can press F to fill it in so I'll loop select again, press F to fill and that means the wire can just kind of slot in and if you really want to be pedantic you can select this and move it and scale it down and it means the wire will kind of always be stuck and that's pretty much ready for printing. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to move all of these into the same layer and I'm going to join these together. So I'll go back into object mode, I'll press Ctrl and J to join them and I have one object. Now this is it's recommended to do and it's triangulating the mesh so I'll add in a modifier and I'll do a triangulate. And if I check it in a wireframe, perfect and I'll hit apply. And all I need to do is export out the object. So I'll go to file export and I'll export out an STL. Now STL is generally a print method. I'll save this to the desktop and I'll just call it my new clip. And here we have options, we can save it as an ASCII, we can do a batch mode, selection only, so if you have more than one mesh in the scene, work fine. I can play around with the scale here and that might solve a few problems, but I'll show you a trick here and I'll export out the XDL. The next thing I'm going to do is jump into Ultimaker Cura. Now Ultimaker Cura is an excellent application, especially if you do 3D printing. Now it's probably one of the best tools for doing slicing and it's free and it comes with a whole bunch of printer options. Now I'll kind of minimise this down and all I'll do is drag the new clip onto the print bed. Now you can see here my printer's already selected and the scale is huge. <laughs> now I already know the scale of this object but there's a thing called a 3D calibration and that's pretty much a ruler. Uh, so let me open this up. And this will actually give you the sizes. So this is what I meant by scale. This is pretty good to scale objects down. But I don't necessarily need that. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to select my object. I'll come to the scale options on the left hand side and I know the scale of this is 2500. And there we go. It's ready for print. Now if you add support, it's completely up to you and you generally do it for like things like arms or overhanging topology. Now I could go into more customised options but if I hit slice, it slices the objects, it gives me a preview, it also tells me how long it's going to take to print, roughly 35 minutes, which is quite long to be honest, considering it's quite a small object. And that's us. I hit save to file, I then put the SD card in the printer and I print the object. Do me a favour guys, if you would like to see more of this content, stick a comment down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and you can also support me in Gumroad, my god these links are getting longer, you know what to do, take care.